Beloved in Christ, you know the Word of God tells us that uh, many deceivers have gone out into the earth. And also the Word of God tells us that uh, Jesus said, let the wheat and the tare grow together. And when he sent his angels, then they will separate the tear from the wheat. And we know that there are um, many false prophets that are out there in the earth. We know there are many people who say that they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but yet they don't walk like him. They don't talk like him. Uh, they, they are completely opposite of Christ, even to the point where they are walking under the power of the spirit of the Antichrist, but yet they say that they are Christians, but show no semblance of Christ whatsoever. But do you know that there is a surefied way to know that you have passed from uh, death to life? that you are born again, that you are a child of God. Do you realize that there's a sure way? And it's not because you said it. It's not because you feel as though you're a child of God. But there is a, a, literally a test that you and I can actually take to even determine if we are even a child of God at all. Look what the Word of God tells us in 1 John, the third verse, the third chapter, and the 14 verse, look what it says, beloved. We know, we know, hear that again, beloved. We know that we have passed from death unto life because, why? We love the brethren. We love God's children. Glory be to God. He that loveth not his brother, amen, abided in death. He do, who does not love his brother, abided in death, abided in damnation. He who loved not his brother. Look what it goes on to say. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer had eternal life abiding in him. Glory be to God. So what John is writing here, if a person say that they are Christian and they don't love the brethren, he says they are simply just lying to themselves because they are, in God's eyes, a murderer of their brother. And a murderer has no place in the kingdom of God. And look what the Word of God says. Eternal life is not abiding in him. If you hate your brother, that's in Christ. God's Spirit is not abiding in you. You have separated yourself from God's children without even recognizing and knowing it. And many of us, beloved, have done this. We have done this through the fact of not understanding that sometimes when people do things to us who are brothers and sisters in Christ, they do it out of immaturity because of a lack of growth. But we call it something else. And we begin to and we get to a point where we'll be angry and we don't want to speak to those people. We don't want to have anything to do with those people, but yet they confess Christ, just like you and I do. Beloved, we need to be very aware of how we are treating one another. We need to handle one another with care. This really determines your true relationship with the Heavenly Father. It really does. Because you can't say you love the Father and hate your brother. It's impossible. You cannot love the Father who made your brother in his own image and you hated him, then you also hate the father without even recognizing it. So beloved, we have to throw hate completely out of the equation and quit trying to justify hate by saying, oh, I'm simply trying to help them. I'm tr simply trying to get them to do it the way that I believe it should be done. 
No, beloved. If it gets you to the place where you are despising and hating your brother, according to John, eternal life does not abide in you. And the word abide means, that doesn't mean that it is it remaining in you. It's abiding in you as long as you want it to abide in you. But when you determine that you no longer want the Holy Spirit to abide in you, beloved, he can abandon you just like anything else. We have to understand that, beloved. We have a choice in this matter. God just, just doesn't call us unto himself. He called us unto himself and he will keep us. But it is our choice to remain kept. Understand that, beloved. God will do nothing against our will. Our will is masterful. Our will is is the determination of where we will spend eternity, our will. Beloved, it is our will. If we determine not to abide in the Lord, beloved, we can walk out any day and do it our own way. Amen? We have to understand that, beloved. That's why, that's when the Word of God begins to make sense. Because when you believe that somehow you can do whatever you do, you can hate like you want to, and whatever way you want to, and at the same time abide. Beloved, that's like saying that if I turn off all the lights where in this room I'm at right now, that light will remain. No, beloved, it will go away and it will be totally dark in this room. So, beloved, it is our choice to walk in the light or to walk in darkness. And that's why the Word of God is there to instruct us so we can continue to walk in the light. Beloved, be blessed in Jesus' name name.